So we know that a change in kinetic energy is associated with work done on the object. That is, if you take the initial kinetic energy of an object and subtract it from the final kinetic energy, you get the net work done on the object. So in this lesson, we'll try to understand what really happens to an object when we do work on it. Now, in a more formal way, this equation is referred to as the work kinetic energy theorem. And since this is an equation, feel free to move the various entities in this equation to the left or the right hand side. So you could write this equation as K final is equal to K initial plus the network done. And this could be interpreted as the final energy of an object that is after the network is done on it is equal to the kinetic energy of the object before the network is done plus the network done on the object. So let us say you ran up to a cart that was already moving with a velocity of one meter per second and applied a certain continuous constant force that increased its velocity to three meters per second. Then what you can say about this situation is that the force you applied did a work on the cart equal to the change in kinetic energy of the cart and when you calculate this by putting the initial and final magnitudes of velocity in this equation, you find this change in kinetic energy equals 40 joules. That is also equal to the work done by the force you provided. What we can further say is that the force you applied did positive work of 40 joules on the cart. And why positive? Well, apart from the fact that this number turned out to be positive, is that this force helped to increase the velocity of the cart and therefore we consider it as positive work done. And if you're told that the displacement that happened during this time is eight meters, you can also calculate the magnitude of force applied by you using the equation work done is equal to force into displacement. So here the force applied is 40 joules upon 8 meters or 5 newtons. However, if the reverse had happened, that is the card was moving at 3 meters per second and you came in and applied a reverse force to slow it down to 1 meters per second, the work done would be K final minus K initial that would equal minus 40 joules, which therefore means that the force you applied has done negative work on the cart. And of course, the magnitude of the force, if you calculate, would be 5 Newton, but in the opposite direction. And if you think about this in a more worldly way, it all makes perfect sense. You apply force in the direction of motion, the velocity increases, and so does the kinetic energy. You apply force against the direction of motion, the velocity decreases and so does the kinetic energy. So I really hope this lesson is helping you. And if it is, please subscribe to the channel or leave a comment. That will be helpful. Okay, let's get back to the lesson. Now, an important thing you should remember is that when using this equation, we always consider the net force acting on the object. So if there's more than one force acting on the object, you should first calculate the net force by adding up all the forces vectorially and then using that net force to calculate the work done on the object. You could also calculate the work done by each force and add them up to get the net work done. Now, you could say that there is a force of gravity and normal reaction also acting on the cart. So why did we not consider these forces as well in doing the calculation? And the answer is, of course, you should consider these forces, but you do not quite need to because you can see that the direction of the force of gravity and the displacement is perpendicular and therefore the work done by the force of gravity would equal zero. And the same would be true for the force of normal reaction as well. So the key idea here is that the kinetic energy of the cart or any object changes because a force is applied to it. And as we explained earlier, 
this force can transfer energy to the object or transfer energy out of the object. Another interesting way of interpreting the work energy theorem would be that when a particle undergoes a displacement, it speeds up if the total work done on it is greater than zero and slows down if the total work done on it is less than zero and maintains the same speed if the total work done is zero. So if you were to put this theorem in two simple diagrams, it would be like this. A block slides to the right on a frictionless surface. If you push to the right on the moving block, the net force on the block is to the right and therefore the total work done on the block during a displacement S is positive and the block speeds up. If you push to the left on the moving block, the net force on the block is to the left and the total work done on the block during a displacement S is negative and the block slows down. So let us take an interesting real life situation where we almost always pull our hand back while catching a ball. And the question is, why do we do that? Can work energy theorem explain this? So when you catch the ball, what is happening is that the ball comes to a stop in your hand because your hand is applying a stopping force on the ball and does an amount of work equal to the force multiplied by the distance your hand travels. And this, according to work energy theorem, should equal final kinetic energy of the ball minus the initial. Now, since the final velocity is zero, because we know that the ball comes to a stop in your hand, Kf or the final kinetic energy becomes zero and the work done by this force equals the initial kinetic energy of the ball only. Now, we can substitute F into displacement D for work done here. Also, remember that if the hand is applying a force on the ball, the ball is applying an equal and opposite force on the hand. And that is the reason your hand hurts. So now if you observe this equation, the only way you can minimize the force that acts on your hand is if you maximize distance D because this is a constant and cannot change. And that is exactly what you do. When you pull your hand back, you minimize the force that impacts the palm of your hand. So work and energy is not an easy topic to understand, but if you really want to get good at it, I'd suggest you head over to this playlist that covers the entire chapter quite well. And like always, do give a thumbs up or leave a comment. That'll be helpful. And I'll see you in the next lesson.